is going on, everybody? My name is Eric, and you are listening to another exciting episode of the Unlockables podcast, the story of video games, the people who play them, and the memories made along the way. As always, I appreciate you tuning in wherever and whenever in time and space you might be located. It means a lot that you're willing to spend just a little bit of your val- valuable time with us each and every week. But listen, I'm not going to drone on about my usual intro here because I have some very exciting guests waiting in the wings. Uh, it is my good friends, Andrew and Dylan from your, the Friendly Neighborhood Gamers. Guys, how you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic. Dylan, how are you doing? I am doing well as well. I can't complain as usual. <laughs> so, can never <laughs> complain. Nope. You, you feel free, man. This is a uh, this is a rant uh, acceptable <laughs> zone. So if you got anything to get off your chest now, I would just go ahead and do it. He Don't literally can't host. Not. He's just <laughs> yeah. He's a work that guy. So. <laughs> uh, I see. How uh, it is. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad it's the uh, continuation of a long and fruitful relationship. <laughs> so, um, but guys, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, you guys had me. I had the honor to come on your show a couple weeks ago, and uh, I guess we kind of did like a quid pro quo it's like hey come on my show i'll come on your show do like an even exchange you know so yeah. <laughs> um that was a great experience that episode is out now i'll plug that right now if you haven't listened to it uh go check it out it's awesome and also then when you do that check out all the other episodes too just binge them all at once it's definitely worth it so uh but guys normally before i we dive into the the good stuff here i normally ask since it's a video game podcast you guys been playing anything good and then uh andrew dylan just you guys can coin toss who wants to go first so just go for it yeah. I'll, I'll let Andrew go first. He was talk, talking about a little bit of the stuff he was playing, and I want to hear Perfect. more. Perfect. Okay, uh, let's see. So what I've been playing currently, Elden Ring wrapped up. That, that consumed my life for a couple months after its release. I did a whole playthrough with one character, and then I'm probably about a third of the way through on a second character, and then oh, we'll nice. start some other games. So currently I'm playing... Tales of Arise is probably the biggest one that I'm uh, oh, okay. right now. So I've been been enjoying that. Um, playing it on PS5, got it real cheap through like GameStop couponery and whatnot. And so <laughs> that that game's been really fun. It's definitely got a lot of the kind of like JRPG anime tropes, but it just has a really awesome combat system and a oh, okay a story that I think is sort of somewhat simple i guess in how it's set up but i like the characters a lot and i like the way that they frame it all and so i'm i'm pretty engaged i like the story so far and the combat system has just been a lot of fun it's it's real time action like you go into encounters in the world and it takes you to like a separate like battle area but it is i guess kind of similar to final fantasy 7 remake where you're doing okay actions as your character and then you're telling the other characters what to do, but they're also doing things on their own if you're not commanding them. So they're kind of doing their thing. You're doing their thing. And the whole idea is you're kind of looking for synergy. Like how best can I optimize my squad and what we're doing in this particular fight? And so that's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed that. That's cool. I was, it's been on my list. I, when it came out, I think it came out tail end of last year, correct? Or like maybe fall last year. Yeah. Yeah. So it was on my list. I just, I didn't pick it up to, I, I was just playing too many other things at that time. It seemed like it was a little bit lengthy, but um, yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about it. And I heard the developer the other day say they passed like 2 million copies sold or something like that. So yeah, that's that's fantastic for that game. Yeah. Yeah. No, Uh, I had also heard really good things about it. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to check it out. Cause I had heard not just from like your IGNs and game spots and all that, giving it good reviews, but like, you know, friends and people that I knew playing it were like, man, this game is actually a lot of fun. And so Mm -hmm. I finally, this was a, a good time to, to dive in the standard uh the the usual ign between eight and 8.5 out of 10 where it's just like oh every game's 8.5 8. out of 10 <laughs> literally so. everything they reviewed last year was an eight <laughs> it was driving me crazy this year they've thrown some sevens in there oh so, yeah. you gotta mix it up a little bit to keep the the fans guessing right but uh yeah. that's yeah. very cool um yeah it seemed like last year was a really awesome year for rpgs with that and uh scarlet nexus was also on my list because that mm-hmm. looked awesome as well so uh yeah definitely gonna have to pick that up for sure uh dylan you've been playing anything good man uh, yeah, so like Andrew, uh, after Elden Ring, I was also trying to find uh, <laughs> something to fill that void. Um, not that I have really stopped Elden Ring hardcore fully, you know, like it, it'll still <laughs> load into it and mess around in it. But 
It's still um, downloaded for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always right there. Exactly. Um, but I, I went down the like I, this past month or so has been pretty busy for me uh, with uh, classes and school and stuff. And so, uh, yeah, um, so I've been trying to get in a lot of like just quick little things that I, I didn't want to get too invested in like a big overarching story after Elden Ring because that already took enough of that uh, for me. Um, so a lot of what I've been playing has been, I guess, like Battle Royale ish. Um, oh, I'm cool. not. I wouldn't normally consider myself to be like a big battle royale player, um, mostly because I I don't feel like I'm good enough and I don't like pairing up with like random people. Um, And so it's, you know, a lot of the time you're just at a disadvantage because it's matching you with like uh, either really, really good people who are solo or like against teams of three or four. Um, Right. So I have been playing a lot of Hunt Showdown, um, which... I had seen a bunch like it kept popping up on lists of like, you know, this is one of the best games you've probably aren't play like you're not playing sort of thing. Um, and like it's doing new, unique stuff in the Battle Royale space, like all of those kind of articles. And so I checked it out. Um, I had played it like way, way back when it was still like early on in its development. Um, and I like that it does like some new like rather than having it just be like player versus player. They've got a bunch of like enemies in there that are just like world enemies. Um, and instead of like a, a random ring of storm or gas or whatever, pushing you towards, you know, points, um, you're collecting information and, and heading towards like these world bosses that you're trying to take out as, you know, either a solo player or as a team. Um, and so the whole map stays open the entire time and you can, make a lot of like cool decisions and you know um it's a it's a lot smaller more condensed of a, a thing and so that's been fun and then i got back into star or to uh fortnite uh a little bit over the past week or so just because they've been doing their star wars event um oh I'm a yeah big star wars fan so i was like oh you know i'll get back in there and run around with a lightsaber that's fun and i they I guess they put in like a no build mode. Um, and so that was always one of the big turnoffs for me with Fortnite, because it's always been a really solid like third person shooter, which is what I like. Um, but the building, I was like, I don't want to like get down and have some like 12 year old just like build this massive tower in three <laughs> seconds and kill me. Um, and so now I feel like we're on a level playing field there um, because there is no <laughs> building. Um <laughs> what then, if it's a 13 year old you're okay with that <laughs> well yeah i mean if a 13 year old's good enough to beat me with all with my like 13 plus years of experience in gaming it's like that's fair man <laughs> just um, not a 12 year old just not a 12 year old well you know it, it is what like if a four-year-old gets me on their mom's phone that's fine you know <laughs> I, I i deserved it um and then i played a little bit of Warzone this week too um because nice. they put in that godzilla event and i'm a big like godzilla fan so I saw that. Um, what a, so what a been, fascinating thing to put into Warzone. That's yeah, right. How, how, that was, so how that was, was how was that? Did it end up it, being pretty good. It, I mean, to me, like I I don't know how good or it is or not because I'm I'm not like uh, I I don't really play Warzone, so I don't know if it's like drastically improved or changed anything. But for me, as a Godzilla fan, dropping into an island and seeing King Kong and Godzilla on it, <laughs> and then like king kong will just like show up and like slam around a bunch of players and kill them or godzilla will breathe his like that, flame that breath across awesome. the island and, and like just <laughs> in a big thing and it's just like get out of the get out of the way he's gonna kill you um so <laughs> for me that's been super cool um personally but right. i don't know if it's like a drastic shift in the the battle royale format or whatever Man. so Call of Duty has changed very drastically from when I stopped playing. So that sounds <laughs> yeah, that sounds amazing. And and yeah, the big my biggest thing with Fortnite too when I tried to play was it was like yeah, you shoot a person once and then they turn into like a skyscraper and you just be like, oh okay, well, <laughs> well, well, this is a thing. Mm. So I, I maybe I should log back on and just try the no build mode because um, I always like to go super hipster on people. I was I I was in the early access of Fortnite like way back in 2014 before mm-hmm. it was like the unstoppable money making crossover machine. Yeah. And it was actually like a really interesting zombie game where you could like mm-hmm. build 
forts, literally forts, and put yeah. traps in it and lure zombies in. It was really fascinating. So, um, yeah, I wonder. I, I, I think I might have to try, try the no build mode just to kind of see what it is mm-hmm. there. So, um, I'm just thinking about <laughs> whoever the mad person at Activision was just like, yo, let's put Godzilla in our right? keys. <laughs> like, that's if you, had, if you had told me, like, hey, guess what? Crazy crossovers are coming this year in gaming. Godzilla and Call of Duty, not one I would have guessed. I just saw <laughs> no. I play Smite some, which is like a little MOBA with like God, right. like a third person MOBA thing. Um, Slipknot, they're doing a crossover. I saw Slipknot. that. <laughs> and I was just <laughs> like, what? Yeah, so, I saw that in one of the discords. I was in somebody posted this. I'm like, I'll take crossovers. I didn't expect for 500, please. Like, that's, exactly. Exactly. That's wild. So. I might have to re-download Smite. <laughs> Dude, yeah, just the, the trailer looks crazy, man. I, yeah. yeah, I was enough. It's like, OK, I might have to try this. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so what a time was, to be a gamer. Yeah, yeah, it was dude. ridiculous. Like, yeah, if you would have told me in high school that they'd be like, hey, yeah, they put Slipknot in a video game, I would have laughed at you. But now yeah. <laughs> who's laughing? Slipknot yeah. probably for all the money they gave him. So probably right. <laughs> um, that's very cool. Uh, yeah. As as for me, uh, if you've listened to the show before, uh, I'm still plowing away at three houses. My second playthrough on that, uh, doing that for a show coming up later in June. Yeah. Uh, which uh, yeah. which color did you go with, or which house? <laughs> I don't remember the house name, so the colors yeah, the only thing that's uh, going to matter to me. So I finished. Uh, I, I played it through once before, so this is my second playthrough of all three. So I I did Black Eagle first, and then okay. Blue Lions, and now I'm finishing up a Golden Deer. Okay. So. Jeez. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, man, it's uh, I, I always complain about like, I don't have enough time to play video games. I'm literally playing one of the longest games ever to exist. <laughs> so uh, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've spoken enough about that. It's it's fantastic. If you know what it is, it's Fire Emblem. Uh, I guess I'm getting old, my old, old in my age because I'm sitting here complaining like, well, this isn't like the Fire Emblems on the Game Boy Advance that I like. Uh, mm. So <laughs> weird. But, yeah, weird. But um, hey it, it's it's fire emblem it's it's fantastic i've mm-hmm. played like literally every single one since i came over so i, I don't have yeah. to sing it's sing its praises too much i recently uh, learned about a game that's similar to fire emblem but without all the bull crap have you have you ever heard about that it would happen to be advanced wars because that's case that and <laughs> yeah yes, that, it is. that's what it's called yeah it's exactly called yeah, that sounds really that familiar <laughs> i'm getting a very strange <laughs> sense of deja vu it's very weird so um yeah i will be getting that when it comes out 100 percent. but mm-hmm. yeah i've been playing that and then um I watched the uh, the Monster Hunter event the other day, yeah. and I've just yeah. been diving more back into that to Speaking get ready for something. Deja vu. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. It, it's inescapable. Let me so just go ahead yeah. and leave the call right now. <laughs> <laughs> just mute. I'll be back in ten minutes. But uh, I've just been trying to finish up um, some of my weapon trees, get some armor, get some jewels that I'm missing. Just trying mm-hmm. to optimize my builds as much as I can for when mm-hmm. whatever they're gonna throw at us, the sunbreak comes out. So yeah. Uh, yeah, just been doing that, doing a couple hunts a night, trying to remember how to play after taking a couple months off Mm -hmm. so that's pretty much it and then i'm gearing up to start my playthroughs for my new series um of kingdom hearts so okay yeah that'll be starting a couple weeks Mm -hmm. and that's gonna be there aren't words to describe it that's gonna be insanity for sure i'm gonna need probably some form of counseling after i finish (laughs) doing all that so i try and piece that together but um now are you you playing through like just the mainline ones that are have been on like playstation you play like the the random like 3ds or uh like we're, psp games or whatever we're playing all of them all of them. Games. so v- luckily uh they did the smart thing well not smart because they obviously cash grab but they put all of them or, or most of them you can experience on the playstation 4 now and then various okay, collections yeah. they released mm-hmm. thankfully um some of the games they just delegated to we're not going to bother porting this. Just here's all the cutscenes. Watch them. So, um, but I do have access to all of those games. Yeah. The only things I don't really have access to now are the now shut down mobile game. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's really it. Yeah. But I played that long enough. I can just there's a movie about it. So I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> yeah. um, I did find out. <laughs> and this is I don't know if I'm going to try and hunt this down or not. But I did find out that there is uh, back in like 2004, 2005. Uh, mm-hmm. Verizon used to have this thing on their phones called VCast, which is like where you used to play their games. Mm-hmm. So there was a Kingdom Hearts VCast game that is like super rare to find that wow. since VCast is now defunct, you can't yeah. find it. So now I'm like, 
man, I already committed to playing them all. I have to find this weird VCast game and, and figure out what's going on with it now. So it probably yeah. has very important lore on it. That's like essential to understand. The story. 100% does. And I'm like, well, let me just see if I can go on eBay and find a phone with Kingdom Hearts VCast <laughs> on it. And I'm, I guarantee you it's going to be like $10,000 probably. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, hey, the Sony Ericsson doesn't work, but it still runs this Kingdom Hearts game or whatever. So. <laughs> wow. This is going to be a deep rabbit hole, but listen, we're not here to talk about that. We are here to uh, talk about you guys, if that's OK with you. I guess, you know, yeah. <laughs> yes. Wait, what is this? You didn't yeah. tell us that. This is a sting operation. This is <laughs> Next a, question. Next gotcha question. Gotcha journalism. Yeah. Uh, no answer. Just uh, just politic all the questions. It's yeah. fine. Just dance around them. So. So I just wanted to, to add, talk to you guys. Uh, you guys host uh, your friendly neighborhood gamers, um, which is an awesome show. Started around the time that I started Unlockable, so I feel like we're kind of like kindred spirits. It's kind yeah. of it's kind of cool. And um, so I just kind of wanted to ask you guys uh, if you could just fill me in a little bit about the origins of that show. I know you guys had a podcast prior to this uh, mm-hmm. that you guys decided to jump in and do this instead. So um, I'm just kind of wondering about what's what's the origin story there. How do you want to do this, Andrew? You want me to go and you fill in the gaps or vice versa? Or? <laughs> uh, you, we can do it like one of those movies where you see the same story from different perspectives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, why don't you you take it away and then I'll jump in where I feel like it, I should. Yeah, so like you, like you mentioned, we had a, a show called Level Playing Field mm-hmm. um, that Andrew and a couple of our other buddies started. Um, and then shortly after that started um covid hit and so everything moved online anyway um and people were in different states and and stuff and so um it was easy for me to kind of slot in there as well and be a part of it um because i was a listener and then i like andrew and i would kind of talk shop about like oh well what if you did this or what if you changed that um, I mean, we had cool. you on before COVID for sure. Like there, yeah, were there were a couple of yeah, anytime were, you were local, we're like, hey, you want to come on the podcast? Mm-hmm. Because level playing field was just like for 100 percent just us having fun. So it'd yeah. be like. As many of us as we had microphones for sitting around <laughs> a table, just mm-hmm. goofing off and like then I would try to make something listenable out of it <laughs> in post and we would yeah. just throw it up there. And so like. That was very much like getting our feet wet in the experimental thing. But yeah, definitely once uh, Dylan wasn't as local and then another guy who was there that when we started it, Joe, he moved away and this was all kind of like a little bit before COVID. It was, we were definitely looking into how do we do this remotely so we can mm-hmm. keep this band of characters together. Right. You know? And we experimented with like, discord bots and you know all sorts of different things and eventually kind of figured it out and then when COVID did hit all of a sudden you really saw the rise of like your zen casters and squad casts and mm-hmm. zoom really stepped up right. their game and discord stepped up their game a lot with what they were offering and so that that definitely helped but back at it dylan yeah um so we did that we did that for what 100 episodes i believe plus um, yeah a few few bonus ones here and there i think it's mm-hmm. probably close to 110 total yeah so that's, that's i think a good amount all said and done what like two two to three years somewhere it's in that about range two, two years of like posting episodes probably about three years of like from buying microphones to wrapping mm-hmm. up kind of thing you know yeah and so uh, at that point, like life was getting busy for all of us. Stuff was happening. Like uh, Andrew was going back to school. I was getting busy with school. 
uh, level playing field grew too fast. We started doing like trying to do a Patreon, doing bonus <laughs> content, <laughs> trying to be like on top of the weekly news. So we, mm-hmm. I was only giving myself a couple days turnaround to edit. Mm-hmm. So it's just like there were so many things kind of culminating all at yeah. once. Yeah, like our, I think our biggest lesson taking away from that was just kind of like don't you don't have to do everything um Mm -hmm. like you can have a much more focused vision on what you're doing for each each little bit of it and slowly kind of add in things as you want versus we were just kind of like you know we'd have an idea and be like hey what if we did this and we just do it and then it was like oh man like now we're doing so much we can't keep up with it um and so it got busy and uh so at a certain point we kind of just talked about it and uh we decided to go on like a little bit of a hiatus um and kind of indefinitely or kind of go on an indefinite break sort of thing and so um about a month into that andrew and i were kind of already feeling that creative itch uh a little bit of like Hey, I kind of want to like keep doing this, uh, but like a, a different version of it, a more focused version of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we kicked that around a bunch and kind of came up with the idea of your friendly neighborhood gamers and kind of what we wanted it to be. Um, because we both listened to a lot of gaming podcasts just you know between the two of us and something that always kind of stuck out about those in in our minds was like those are cool for us but it really kind of gives you only the perspective of people who are like big in the industry you know um Mm -hmm. like most of the time there are plenty of like smaller gaming podcasts like us and you um but those are not as not necessarily the ones that people start off listening to. A lot of times they'll start off with like IGN or kind of funny or, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. Um, and those are all, you know, reviews and stuff given by people who get the game for free and who, you know, or friends like, with Troy Baker. Yeah. They, right. They exactly. Play video games for a <laughs> living and, you know, it, it, and so it, at times it really feels kind of out of touch with like what your average gamer is doing, you know? Um, and so we wanted to kind of come up with a show that kind of spotlighted your more average gamers, um, you know, people who were into gaming, who maybe had a podcast or were streaming on Twitch or, you know, something like that, but not somebody who was necessarily concerned with playing every huge release, not somebody who is, you know, in the industry, friends with Phil Spencer or whatever, like just your regular average person, because uh, in a way, a lot of times gaming can be kind of like almost stigmatized or people are like, well, I don't feel like I'm a gamer because like I'm not playing the newest Call of Duty or whatever. And it's like, well, you know, you're playing Animal Crossing like that's still a game. That's still <laughs> right. like you're a gamer. <laughs> we would love to talk to you about the things that you find cool. So. That was kind of the idea of the show, and we kind of spun out everything else from there. I think it's a fantastic idea. Just just one thing, if if uh, dear listener, if you happen to stumble across this, if you are friends with Phil Spencer or Troy Baker, <laughs> just uh, if you pass along, hate to say, we'd like to talk to him. Just bring him over. Uh, <laughs> yes. Sorry. Just shame, shameless shilling. Uh, yeah, we're but, not saying that like if those guys wanted to come on our show, we would tell them no. But we we definitely too like popular. We, we, we wanted to start kind of from like a ground level. So like, there's a lot of cool people, and you can hear interviews with a few of them so far that we've had mm-hmm. on our show. Like uh, for you, for example, but like I think of Katie who plays flute music of like you know mid uh oh yeah video game music that she takes and kind of reworks and makes into like a flute song, and that's like super cool and unique and original and so being able to have her on the show and talk to her Mm -hmm. about why she does it and what made her want to do it and that kind of thing is i i think that's really cool and that's the main focus of what we wanted to do with this content was kind of interview and talk to to cool people in like that community level of like your average gamers and then we like dylan was saying we wanted to have more intention and focus with this content and so like youtube videos serve a purpose podcast serves a purpose the stream serve a purpose and so they're all kind of 
they're doing their own thing. They're not stepping on each other's toes necessarily. Sometimes they complement each other, but it's, and it's all very intentional and it's also all laid out in a way where it's like, we have ample time to make it to the level mm-hmm. of quality that we want to make it without feeling like we're overwhelmed or rushing to get something out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a great take too. And it's, it's something too, I'm, I'm sure you guys have discovered because I know I've discovered certainly doing this show is that uh, when you talk to those smaller people that are at like the community level, not quite at the industry level, they tend to just have more interesting stories and interesting yeah. things to say than just, and I, I'm by no means like knocking your podcast that like wants to recap the news or wants to, yeah. you know, right. um, cover games or, or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Cause I think those, are necessary and those serve a purpose and mm-hmm. um there are certainly a lot of them but um <laughs> it that to me is one of the things you guys highlighted it's like to try and stay on top of all that stuff mm-hmm. it, it kind of creates like a pressure to be like hey stuff's happening like we need to talk about it. we need to put it out now we need, it needs to be in the mm-hmm. algorithm and uh, that's kind of where i was at with like side questing in my project before that blame it on the lag it was like we wanted to talk like every time things were happening it's just like okay like what are we doing here because it's like it's just creating stress. It's not mm-hmm. really gaining any traction. Like, what are we doing? And that's similar to you guys. When I started this show, I wanted to take a more like focused approach and really talk to like the people that yeah. are like playing these games and aren't. Yeah. Like the shilling out for the industry or giving every game an eight out of 10. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. Uh, so a follow up question to that. And you guys have already kind of touched on it too. When you guys were doing level playing field, did, were there any kind of, when you were forming your friendly neighborhood gamers, this idea, were there any lessons or, or things that doing a hundred episodes of a podcast is an incredible achievement. Uh, I doubt, I don't think between the four podcasts I tried to do, I've totaled a hundred episodes. So that's, mm-hmm. that's incredible. Um, did, did you take anything away from that experience that you kind of brought to uh, doing this new experience that has helped you along the way? Yeah. Uh, like I said, level playing field very much started as just, I was just getting into gaming podcasts and I thought, you know what? I want to do that. I want to try it. And so, I mean, the first time we sat down at microphones, we didn't know how to get three separate mics into audacity. Like it was a (laughs) bunch of us collectively Googling, like, how do we do this? And so that's where it started. And Mm -hmm. literally the name was picked that night, right before we hit record on the mic. And we had the choice between two, two names. And as soon as we hit record, I just went with that one. And so it stuck. And so, I learned a lot going through that just about podcasting, about mics, about audio, about editing, about, mm-hmm. you know, structuring, about tell, yelling at people to get closer to their mic or stop hitting the <laughs> table or things like that. Um, mm-hmm. But then obviously, like we've touched on already, you know, we threw a lot of stuff at the wall with level playing field just to kind of see what would stick. And so with this show, I kind of feel like those hundred episodes of that show led into this really well, where I feel like when we launched Your Friendly Neighborhood Gamers and we had three episodes right out of the gate and we had YouTube videos right out of the gate and we had our first stream planned that week, like that was all because of Level Playing Field. We knew what we wanted to do with launch. We had the graphics made. We had the stuff made. We had the promotions Mm -hmm. ready to go. We had the content ready to go. We had an interview. We had an episode that was like just a topic with just us. And then we had a um, game specific like review episode, which are kind of like the three things we wanted the podcast to focus on. And like those mm-hmm. are going to be our our focus. And I think that none of that would have happened without level playing field. Like you can't mm-hmm. do 100 episodes consistently of, of a show and not take something away yeah. just from, you know, technical mm-hmm things like you know what kind of mic do i want to use Mm -hmm. but also just i feel way more comfortable as a host and as like talking to strangers interviewing them going into your friendly neighborhood gamers than i did on level playing field like if you go back and listen to episode one of level (laughs) playing field it's going to sound dramatically different than if you listen to episode one of your friendly neighborhood gamers just because you know at a very base level it's just practice you know practice Mm -hmm doing anything will will make you better at it and so and then all the like technical behind the scenes stuff Mm -hmm. of you know we had five people kind of consistently on that show and that's Mm -hmm. a lot for the editor and for like just trying to organize and wrangle and like you know just make things happen Mm -hmm. so with this show 
the other three co-hosts of level playing field, they've all been on your friendly neighborhood gamers already. And they'll probably be on again, but it's like now they're not committed to a weekly thing. You know, mm-hmm. they don't, they can come and talk when they want to. They can be part of our content if they want to, if not no big deal, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, you know, we, the base level to do an episode is just me and Dylan have to hop on the mics, you know, and that's yeah. not mm-hmm. nearly as like stressful or as much work mm-hmm. as, <laughs> what level playing field had grown into. But like, I, I love that show. I have fond mm-hmm. memories. I only look back on it fondly. It was definitely a learning experience, but for sure, like I, re- I would recommend people go listen to, it. I think it really hit its stride probably in like, you know, the thirties mm-hmm. episodes, mm-hmm. episode wise, but we had a lot of fun. I mean, we, we carried over the like trivia game thing that we do on your friendly neighborhood gamers. We did that on, on level playing field and mm. because we always had enough people. And so that was a lot of fun and we wanted to bring that forward because it was something we really liked. There were a lot of segments on that show that we tried that we mm. didn't carry forward because, you know, we tried them. They didn't really work for us or they didn't, you know, pan out like we had hoped or wanted them to. And so, you know, we just left them behind. No, I got to, first of all, I got to say uh, kudos to you guys because even having to edit and match up one other person's waveform is very <laughs> stressful. So to do it with five people, that's very impressive. So uh, I gross. performed surgery on uh, multiple occasions. <laughs> there were times when so and so's track stopped recording halfway through and then they restarted it or. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, somebody realized they weren't recording and we had to stitch something together or I mean, like when you have five people, it's just. It's a lot. It's a lot yeah. to make sure yeah. that everything goes off without a hitch. And mm-hmm. spoiler alert, it doesn't go off doesn't. without a hitch. <laughs> no. But it really provides you, though, like you said, with that that base level knowledge of, OK, I know how to do this now. And I think really that's that's half the battle. I, I certainly know that a couple my early projects were kind of the same thing. It was mm-hmm. how do I do this? How do I get to a sound where I like how it sounds, mm-hmm. which is something I tell people too. They're like, well, how did you figure out like the optimal sound? It's like, well, everybody likes how, that, how things sound differently. So For it sounds sure. good to you. Just like, just that it's fine. Put it mm-hmm. out, whatever. As long as you are good at what you do, like I'll listen to it even so. But um, I don't know. Again, I went off on a tangent rambling. And I don't know where I was going with it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, to have that like baseline knowledge and then coming into like a new project where it's like, okay, we know how to do this now. Like it's, it's relatively mm-hmm. figured out. So now we can go and focus on the actual content, which is the good stuff. So, yeah, exactly. um, yeah, yeah I, I, I think about it, like starting a band where it's like, you know, you start that, maybe you start a first band where no one really knows how to play their instruments and no one's ever done that before. And so you're just kind of like messing around and learning a bunch and then, you give it a couple of years and then you go and you start a different band and it's like, okay, now I know how to play this instrument. Now I know how to do this. Now I know how to mm-hmm. play with other people. Now I know how to, you know, maybe we know how to like talk to people about booking shows or whatever. So mm-hmm. um, it, it's, it's the same. I, I, I liken it to that for us where it's like, okay, we, we gave it like two years, two solid years of like learning how to do everything. And now we've got it uh, like, that knowledge is still there. All that practice from doing a hundred episodes is still there. And so we Mm. can kind of just take it forward with us. I think that's a, that's a great analogy. Yeah. My, my cousin had started probably four or five bands over the 10 years that he's been playing music. And now this latest one is finally a culmination of everything that he's learned and they're finally hitting their stride. So Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a, that's a very, very accurate uh, analogy there. So, um, so I wanted to ask you guys, uh, in your experience doing the podcast, um, obviously this one and Level Playing Field, uh, you can draw from across both those experiences. Uh, is there anything you've kind of learned about your tastes in games in general? Is there anything that's kind of like changed your opinions or you've kind of had a different look at it since you've kind of started doing the podcast, talking to other people and just kind of being in it every week? I feel like I, I talked a lot on the last one. Um, yeah, I feel like Dylan's more in tune with like has been more in tune with the kind of games he likes longer than me and has like been more aware of that. So I'm gonna let him go first and then I'll, sure. I'll yeah. share mine. So so one of the episodes actually that we did on level playing field was about like uh, we did kind of like a personality test of your gaming interests and your gaming like profile or whatever. Um, and so that was already something that I was kind of just like interested in in general, because I was like, you know, why do I like these games that I like? Um, But 
uh, I think that definitely made us all kind of think a little bit about like what when I go look for a game, like what am I looking for? And and like Andrew said, I think he and I for sure had been kind of like a listening to other gaming podcasts. We had kind of figured out like, oh, OK, this game sounds like one that I might want to check out or this one is maybe something I don't want to check out or I'm not going to be that into. Um, and so, you know, I definitely kind of sat down and was like, OK, I when I go to a game, I really like to be able to explore and and learn about a world and a lore. And I like to go in like I'm not uh, I don't mind combat. I like combat in a lot of games, but I don't need there to be combat in a game. I, I'm happy to to have long extended periods with no combat. I'm not going in with like any sort of a competitive uh, stint in anything. I'm just trying to like go in and have some fun um kind of immersing myself in the world um and so the i I think that was something that i kind of took away and just kind of the the reminder that like a lot of the stuff that i get into and play is not necessarily the newest stuff you know like occasionally there will be some new things that i enjoy that i like you know I, i like Elden Ring and that came out and you know Andrew and I both played that you know well we set our our time zone to New Zealand so that we could play it you know like 16 (laughs) hours early or whatever (laughs) um and so like we were super into that game um and you know we've been into other like recent releases and stuff but there's a lot of stuff that I get into that's like years and years old and have a lot of fun with um and I don't I guess that's something else that I I feel like I knew, but was kind of reinforced in our show with level playing field is like, I like to be able to go and experience whatever game I want to experience when I want to experience it without having to feel like I'm um, pressured to beat it in any sort of certain time frame or like that I've got to like play it because it's the new thing and we've got to record an episode on it in two weeks or it's going to be like pointless, you know? So I feel like that's kind of what I've learned. Yeah. So for me, I kind of went on a bit of a, like a up and down type thing where when I first, when I was just playing games from childhood to young adult, it was kind of like whatever I thought looked cool. And I didn't really think much beyond that. Well, then when I started getting into like the industry podcasts and like listening to your kind of funnies and IGNs and stuff like that, and I wanted to start podcasting. Then I wanted to play everything that was like in the zeitgeist. And so I kind of went through this phase where it was like, if it was big, if it was being talked about, if it was this, this cool new indie game that everyone was talking about, I wanted to try it because a, I was trying to broaden my horizons a little bit and like kind of find my tastes. B, I wanted to talk about it on the show. I wanted to make content out of it. And then C, like I was just caught up in like this was all new to me getting on this like deeper industry level of what was going on. Then towards the end of level playing field, probably and definitely going into this show. I realized that there are types of games and games that I don't like, and that's OK. Like, I don't have to, like, I will never beat Celeste, probably. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's a great (laughs) game that people talk about and they say is amazing. And, like, the industry loves it and falls all over themselves about it. But it's just not my cup of tea. The, like, I like Animal Crossing up to a certain extent, but, like, I'm not going to sit around and only play cozy games, you know? So, like, there's, there's definitely genres and games that are not, my cup of tea and like i've gotten to the point now where it's like i'm okay with that i don't need to play those just because everyone's talking about them and like similar to dylan if i do play them i don't need to play them day one i can wait and pick them up later and so i've kind of gotten to the point where i'm a little bit more choosy with what i play and when i play and that's also not to say that you know we're not going to pick up bigger releases and and try them out if it's something that speaks Mm -hmm. to us And it's also not to say that the podcast did not help me broaden my horizons because like I look back on Hades as a good example where that was not my type of game, not my style of game, not necessarily my genre. And 
everyone was talking about how good it was just in the industry, but also like our group of friends and like the people on the podcast. And we just kind of had Dylan and I were sitting there like, okay, we need to do an episode. Uh, Hades is pretty cheap. Everyone keeps saying it's good. You and I, we could pick it up on switch. We could play it. We'll do an episode on that. And then that year, that was our game of the year for Mm -hmm. level playing field collectively. Like we all loved that game. All five of us on that show loved it and loved it. I think probably for different reasons. Yeah. And so definitely the, the experience of podcasting and like kind of exploring gaming Mm -hmm. on like a deeper level than I did just, you know, growing up and playing games has helped me broaden my horizons and realize what it is I like and what I, what it is I don't really like and maybe Mm -hmm. why that is. But I definitely kind of went through like this up and down thing where it was like, I don't really pay attention. Now I want to like everything. Okay. Now I realize there's stuff that I don't like. Okay. Now also it's okay that I don't like these things. I don't Mm -hmm. have to like everything just because it's popular. Yeah. I'm, I can relate to that because I'm kind of on that same roller coaster ride with you this yeah. year, most recently too. I, I came to Hades the same way. I, I came absolutely hating roguelike games. I, I didn't like them. I played Enter the Gungeon. After a couple runs, I'm like, "This is stupid." I hate, like, I hate this. <laughs> no, I, the industry says that's good. You have I, to I like know. it. I know exactly. And then, so yeah, Hades comes out, and I, I were in the middle. It was my game of the year as well, and having despise roguelike games and. Yeah. Hades comes along, there's so much buzz about it. And I was like, trying not to give it. I'm like, I don't like roguelites. You don't have to buy it. But there was so much buzz. I'm like, all right, let me give it a chance. Gave it a chance and absolutely fell in love with it. And th- I, so then I kind of entered this spiral where I was like, well, I have to try and play everything that everyone says that they love because it obviously must be really good. And I, in like this group of podcasters that we all associate right. with on Twitter and everyone's like playing different games and beating different games and beating so many games. And I'm like, I have to play all these games. I have to keep up and beat so many games and I have to do all these things. And yeah, finally where it broke for me was earlier this year in February when I picked up Sifu mm-hmm. when it came out and played Sifu. I thought it was fun, but I put it back down and I never finished it just because yeah. I was like, I didn't fully enjoy it. And then it was at that point And then Elden Ring came out a couple weeks later where I was literally on the page to buy Elden Ring. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Well, you've picked up and put down so many Souls games before. It's not that you don't like them. They're just you just haven't finished any of them. Are you really yeah. going to give in and buy Elden Ring right now just because it's the current hype thing? Mm-hmm. You don't need to play right now. It's fine. Like, and I pulled myself back. I'm like, you don't have to be part of the hype conversation. Like, it's OK to play it later. You, you have to. And that's when um, I was on a tear the mm-hmm. first couple, four months of this year, just beating so beating so many games, more games than I beat. I beat more games in the first four months of this year than I beat all last year. Mm-hmm, and yeah. I was like, you need to pull back and stop. Like, this is getting out of hand. So that's when I picked a Fire Emblem, mm-hmm. doing a second playthrough. That's like a 90 plus hour game if you do yeah. all the routes. And I'm just like saying, it's OK. I don't have to beat as many games as other people. I don't have to experience everything that everyone else is experiencing. Like, I can pull back and just play the things I love. And I know more now after having gone through that debacle with Sifu and almost buying Elden Ring of what I like more and it's okay to play just what I like. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. And something that we learned too, I think from our previous experience was that the, like when we looked at the stats of game or of podcasts, almost without fail, the like highest downloads, the highest engagement, the highest interactions, all that kind of stuff was on the episodes that were about like a specific video game and not current games like Mm -hmm. you know obviously an Elden Ring episode is going to do you know great but those have legs those have you know and so we were like oh okay so we don't need to like jump on this new game just because it's fresh and new like we can take our time we can enjoy it we can we can talk about a game that we played you know years ago or or that Mm -hmm. you know came out years ago that we're just now playing and put that episode out because when people are looking for a new podcast, they're going to type in, you know, like, oh, well, let me let me see what they thought of control or let me see what they thought of shadow of war <laughs> or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and they're going to listen to that episode be, for us anyway. Uh, and so it's like, oh, OK, cool. So we'll we'll just worry about that. We won't we don't feel obligated to play the big, fresh, new stuff anymore unless we just want to because that's what like Elden Ring was an easy one because we both are huge soul fans. Right. And so we were like, well, yeah, we're going to play that and talk about it because we we want to talk about it uh, that makes rather sense. than feeling yeah. like we had to talk about it, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. we did uh, like a Last of Us episode on our last show years after that game came out. And it was one of our top five episodes for a long time. 
Mm-hmm. And it's just because when people find a new podcast, they they l- look for games that they enjoy. And so, you know, it doesn't really matter when you recorded. Our Animal Crossing was our top downloaded episode for a long time. And we recorded that. It came out almost a month after the game came out. And it was like our first impressions having played it for like five hours. And yeah. like we didn't mm-hmm. we hadn't even really seen everything that game had to offer. But it was just, you know, that was just how we framed it. And so that was one of the reasons we wanted to frame this show the way we did where it's like it's the average gamer's perspective so like i'm gonna play horizon forbidden west at some point i enjoyed the first one but Mm -hmm. i didn't have to buy it right at launch and do an episode on it the week after and be caught up with every other Mm -hmm. podcast that did it and i mean gaming is one of those interesting maybe more so than a lot of hobbies where if you wait it pays off because Mm -hmm. i guarantee that you're going to get that game for a lot cheaper it's going to be in a better state than it was at launch because they've patched a bunch of stuff Mm -hmm. and maybe added content and then um not only that but like it could go to game pass you could Mm -hmm. get it like completely free it could go to playstation plus or whatever Mm -hmm. so like Patience pays off, and the only reason really that people buy stuff the day it comes out is because of the like crazy hype cycle mm-hmm. that is so intense in gaming for some reason. And I think it's yeah. it's intense for a lot of media and like franchises that people love. Like how many people went out and saw Doctor Strange the first night that it opened, obviously. Mm-hmm. But like in gaming, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, I'm uh, part of the problem. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but like a, a movie ticket costs you what you know, and versus a video game that comes out at 60, $70 this mm-hmm. time next year could be 20. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, if you can hold off on that, just mm-hmm. feeling of, I have to be part of the conversation, then mm-hmm. I mean, you, you ultimately get a better experience for less of a, of a cost, which is, is yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, and, and I think you bring up a good point too, of, you know, like when we were talking about, like, we want this to be about more of an average gamers perspective most average gamers i would be willing to bet that like 90 percent of the games that they play are games that are picked up like on sale years after release you know Mm -hmm. and they may occasionally like get in on the zeitgeist of you know a big hyped up really you know like occasionally a big video game will cross over into like mainstream media and they you know animal crossing for example or elden ring for example i think both of those made it into the mainstream media for more average people to hear about but you know Mm -hmm. like for every game like that there's like a persona 5 or you know a a horizon forbidden west that doesn't quite make it into the mainstream and you see it on sale with the all the dlc and like the complete gold edition or whatever two years after the fact and you pick it up and you play it you have a great time you know Mm -hmm. like if you want to play the witcher 3 right now you can get the complete edition for like ten dollars on sale you know and if you aren't a super hardcore gamer you probably haven't had a bunch of the big stuff spoiled for you either you know unlike Mm -hmm. movies where it's like if you don't see the movie like within the first week or two and you pay attention at all on social media it's going to be spoiled for you (laughs) so exactly i do i do want to uh i do want to play the witcher dylan Uh, i'm glad you brought that up i think i I think i may have to do that here pretty (laughs) soon (laughs) man i'm just thinking about the massive amount of content that the witcher three is in to get it at ten dollars is kind of mind-boggling for yes. the insane. the amount of experience that you get from that that's insane mm-hmm. <laughs> man what what a crazy time we live in so yeah. um what uh so obviously doing 100 plus shows and now your new endeavor uh what are some of your guys's favorite experiences doing the podcast so far do you have any that kind of stick out kind of broad ones i think like occasionally uh like some of the big ones that stick out to me are when we would do like a topic that everybody was super invested in and would have good discussions around um Mm -hmm. or or learn something around so you know some of our discussions about um like i i really liked the like gaming motivations profile ones i really liked um i think at one point we talked about like some of our like first memories of games and that sort of thing. Um, Or just, you know, like with five people that are all friends, you know, getting in there and like having some sort of random inside joke or whatever that, that (laughs) spawns, you know, we were playing uh, one of our ending show games and, you know, like just some of the answers that we would throw out there. 
have kind of been memed within our our little group our community for you know go ahead and say it just go ahead and say which one you're talking about and that it's our most viewed youtube video from that project uh well i know there was like a sexy pokemon uh that's, the one. Yep, that, that's it yep. um, sexy I put, pokemon. it was my week to put together uh, a game that's incredible and it's so something, i was yes <laughs> I, I, I put together like a family feud-esque game, which they all complain about <laughs> because they always disagree with the rankings because they don't understand how family feud works. Mm. And like as a as a joke, little last one I threw in like sexiest Pokemon <laughs> and they were they were crazy uh, about it. Joe specifically. It, yeah, very much, <laughs> so. very much disturbed us. It's. Good, definitely a good closing game to go listen to if you do go back and check out the level playing field uh, content catalog over there for sure. Mm-hmm. I think that's okay because uh, just given the state of the fan art community, I'm pretty, I'm sure it's more tame than anything that anybody has drawn oh, on the internet. Yeah, no, so. <laughs> we we were all reacting to it as like, oh wow, this is this crazy thing, but it's like, yeah, no, the people that are actually into that are like way <laughs> deeper into it than we ever touched. Right. But yeah, don't. Google Sonic's feet, whatever you do. Yeah, no. Go to a dark place. No, for sure. (laughs) Um, I think that some of my favorite experiences, I agree with Dylan. Um, Whenever we had like a topic where like everybody would engage, because that was one of the struggles with five people is like everyone being able to contribute their voice Mm -hmm. equally to the conversation sometimes was a bit of a struggle. And so like a lot of those things definitely, when we have, just hit that kind of stride where everybody was engaged or whatever. Um, But I think, and it's probably apparent based on what we're doing with the friendly neighborhood gamers. And also it is one of my Mm -hmm. favorite things with this show is just, I I really enjoy the interviews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I like having people on. I like Mm -hmm. um, meeting new people like yourself and like building those relationships and those, you know, kind of those friendships and that community. And I I think it's super fascinating because we we have kind of like a general outline of questions that we use and then we'll like we'll veer off you know like most interviews do we'll veer off if we hit like an interesting tangent or like something specific to that person and their content mm-hmm. but it's like I think it's really cool to see how people tackle these questions differently based on what they're doing or what their yeah. perspective is or what their passion is or what the content they're trying to create is And I've really enjoyed that, that quite a bit. And then outside of that, like kind of selfishly is something that I've really appreciated and really enjoyed about, especially this new project is just like the day we launched, I think you were one of them, uh, Eric, but just like, I got messages and like comments and stuff from people that I hadn't necessarily actually ever engaged with on our old show, just being like, Hey, you know, congrats on launching love the first episode this is great you know that kind of stuff and just like getting that positive feedback Mm -hmm. on this show and like seeing the reviews come in and like seeing messages and comments and stuff like that and and having new people in our our discord and our community that we didn't have before Mm -hmm. like all of that kind of stuff i think is is really cool and super rewarding to get that kind of that positive feedback and even if it's just a handful of people or you know if it were you know, ultimately if it was hundreds of people or whatever, that would be, you know, that would be great too. But like, just, I remember waking up the day we launched and then like looking at my phone and just seeing all the notifications I had and be like, wait, like people actually like know we launched. (laughs) Yeah. And like getting like messages and stuff like that. And I was like, this is really, this is really cool. You know, Mm -hmm. it really makes me feel good. It makes us, you know, that's not ultimately the reason why we're doing this, but it's Mm -hmm. definitely some Mm -hmm. really awesome positive reinforcement yeah yeah and and we had a chance to to like uh, just in doing this like in general it seems the podcast community is a very like kind of collaborative welcoming community at least in in a lot of our experience and so you know like we during level playing field would occasionally like reach out and like talk and collaborate with other shows and you know some of those collaborations have become you know like these cool long-term relationships where Mm -hmm. um you know like for the past couple of years we've done like a little christmas special with a few other shows and Mm -hmm. you know it's our little podcast family almost you know like uh game of groans with uh emily bateman or um 
like Super Bracket Bros with Jay and Eli and uh, eat ketchup with Chris and, er- and not Eric, uh, Chris and Kyle, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's been fun um, getting to to know like people who are also like into podcasting and into, you know, like into gaming and, and that sort of thing, but also like into the podcasting side of it, too, because that's kind of like a, a nice little sub section, little subgroup um, that's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. It is crazy. And I mentioned this on your guys' show, just the Internet. If I take a pretty pessimistic approach to the Internet. That's a pretty bleak yeah. and unhelpful place. Yes, but I agree. For for whatever reason, um, yeah, people I, I don't know if it's podcasting specifically or what it is, but uh, yeah, all of those people are, are very nice, are willing to offer help or suggestions if you ask and be like, hey, like what EQ settings do you use or how do you like what is your editing method and just kind of talk shop with you and um even yeah willing to be like hey come on the show and they're willing to do it and that's that's been f- fascinating I, I didn't think that that would be the case because uh i i just figured getting people to open up to strangers you know especially growing up or warned like hey don't talk to strangers don't don't go in the van or whatever you know yeah. you're not supposed to do that <laughs> but but that that's been a a very a very interesting interesting thing for sure mm-hmm. so um yeah so uh I kind of want to get I, I shared with on your guys' show uh, a little bit of the scoop up of some stuff coming up for my show. Mm. So uh, I wanted to know if uh, I could maybe get the return scoop and see if you guys had any uh, kind of cool ideas or anything coming up in the works that, uh, y- you know, maybe you could just give us a little teaser about. Well, I'm going to play every single Kingdom Hearts game. <laughs> you and, too? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Um future plans for call me if you decide to do that i'll be on every episode <laughs> yeah, we'll just we'll like we'll go through it together we'll, we'll tackle them together to man to save our collective sanity uh everybody please uh everybody please come visit us in the wherever the they send ward, us to yeah. afterwards yes the <laughs> yes. psych ward please <laughs> but yeah no effing gamers um ultimately it's it's just kind of like incremental improvement at this point mm-hmm. like um mm-hmm. we've already increased our podcast from bi-weekly to weekly like we just hit a point where it was like okay this isn't too too stressful too demanding like i could i feel like i can do more Mm -hmm. i want to interview more people i want to be able to talk about more games and not have like our content planned out for the next two years kind of thing Mm -hmm. so we we definitely have have that that has recently happened um Mm -hmm. we've kicked around the idea of streaming a little bit more often like we we definitely have our weekly friday night streams that we do Mm -hmm. together most of the time but we both talked or or kicked around like you know i'm thinking about maybe streaming this game and going through it like you know solo on a different night and dylan's talked about doing things like that so like nothing nothing in concrete there but we've we definitely like the idea of Mm -hmm. doing a little bit more of that yeah um i mean like ultimately we want this thing to just keep growing and keep Mm -hmm. gaining momentum and being what it is but just being refined over time and you know ultimately like if it started bringing in income that would be fantastic but that's not necessarily our goal as far as like you know having any kind of content or like you know kingdom hearts series type thing like we don't really have anything like that planned currently well you don't but okay dylan does yeah so i i mean i am in a I, I finished a bunch of stuff for school, so I am going to be doing the stream of XCOM 2 that has nice. been years in the making of like creating people from like the community and guests so that we've had on the podcast and stuff in the game and letting them die with us. That's uh, very as cool we, as we play through. So I am going to I am doing that now. Um Probably just know started. if you do that and if you happen to name someone after me i will die i have died mm. in everything that <laughs> anybody has named me in ever nuzlocks oregon trail like everything i have died i have not survived so just to warn you that sounds like a challenge dylan yeah so we like so keep me alive gonna, we are gonna do that and uh i'm gonna try to put up like a a video of like customization options on our or on our discord so that anybody who is in our community that wants to get into the game can be like i want these options for my character and i can go in and make them um, that's cool and yeah, so eric get in our discord 
And then I, I, I honestly didn't know you guys had Discord, <laughs> which I should probably because you mentioned it every episode. And I probably should have known that. I will uh, join immediately after this episode. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and, and I think no too, pressure. Uh, this summer, uh, we'll both be in the same place uh, for at least a little bit. Um, oh, yeah. And so uh, there will hopefully be some like maybe in-person content or in-person like videos nice. or streams or something. That, that we'll that's a good do. point. Because um, yeah. we've kicked around like ideas of what we want to do, uh, like, you know, like, get together with like all our friend group and like have like a mm-hmm. Mario party drinking game or something like that. And, and kind of like awesome. go through and, and stream that or get a video of it or something. Um, but because we're all in different places, we haven't had the opportunity to do that. And, and now we're all kind of reconverging uh, into the same place, at least for a little bit. Um, and so uh, hopefully we can do something like that too. Um, I think yeah, our, that, our that plan would be... is that. Uh, whether or not we make it happen, uh, we'll, well, that's still at least a month or two off, but yeah. we'll, we'll see. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Yeah, I'd, I had kind of forgotten that we had talked about that um, back when we started this thing because it seemed so far away. But now we're like we're here on the on the doorstep. Yeah, for sure. We want to do some kind of fun, more silly kind of content when we're together in person. We had a, a few episodes on our last show where we did like a a never have I ever and we did like the 50 video game questions where it was literally just like Mm. sit around a table, have a few drinks and this like answer these ridiculous questions. And Mm -hmm. for a while, those were some of our most popular episodes. They ended up like moving kind of to the middle of the pack, but still uh, they, they, they did pretty well and we definitely enjoyed making them. So we kind of want to like bring that kind of energy to this show at some point or to this content, you know, at some point. Well, please do that. And I look forward to uh, hearing it when you do. I think that would be absolutely great. I look forward to dying in your XCOM playthrough (laughs) uh, because that that is just what happens. So Mm -hmm. it it is inevitable. Especially when Dylan's playing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I I was a little rusty on the first episode of it or the first (laughs) stream of it. So we, we lost... We lost one person and then we lost, but then like we Dr. Strange, like rewound time a little bit and found a, yeah. a different path where Andrew <laughs> didn't die in the first first stream. There you go. So. That's perfectly fine. So, um, all right, cool guys. Thank you so much for providing me a little bit of insight to your show. Um, it's a fantastic show. Uh, if you're listening to this show, there's no reason you shouldn't be listening to your friendly neighborhood gamers. Uh, do it or else uh, <laughs> so th- threaten my listeners. Uh, no, no, you really should do it. I highly recommend it. So um, that threat comes from Eric alone. <laughs> I, I listen, I get, I get very threatening when I get passionate. It's something I just can't help it. So Permit me to. I'd like to uh, pivot to not so much talking about the show, but talking about you guys and y- y- you specifically. So uh, I just want to know a bit about uh, both of you guys. Where did kind of your journey with with games and gaming begin? Where did it all start? Mm. Dylan started. started further back. So yeah. his... the, the question, <laughs> the, so, the question. Yeah. So. Um... Let's see, growing up, um, I didn't really have like consoles for a while. Um, and so I, you know, started off playing, you know, some computer games just on my like computer, just like random, uh, like NHL 99. I think I was playing in like some robot arena type of game and awesome, just like that kind of stuff. Um, probably some sort of like RTS um, was like a lot of the like initial stuff when I was just like uh, 
probably seven, eight, nine, like 10, that range. And there was a lot too of just like, you know, playing video games at friends' houses, like, you know, Smash mm-hmm. Brothers or Mario Kart or, you know, whatever. Um, played a lot of Halo at one of my buddy's houses uh, across the street um, because we he had Halo. And so we would go over there and just play the original Halo, like play through that campaign, play multiplayer, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then when I was about 12 or so, I got a GameCube. Um, and so that was really where it kind of picked up. Um, whereas, you know, before then I had played some, you know, like Knights of the Old Republic on the computer, or Age of Empires or uh, Majesty, that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I, I got to stop you right there. Just time out real quick, because I, I've not met another human being that's ever mentioned Majesty to me before. Uh, we were the number one oh, fan cast. As dude. Oh, I'm so, my dude, gosh. I, I, I do. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> dude. I'm so, uh, Andrew, you played Majesty as well. Oh, yeah. Like he just said, we, oh, we talked about Majesty. What felt like every other. I'm episode sorry, man. It's, it was yeah, so, it's so cool. Good. I love that game so much. Dude. That was one of oh. my earliest gaming like memories, too. Was, uh, and oh. j- not just Majesty, but like the Majesty demo. So like I would mm-hmm. play like the first like map over and over because that's all we had. And then eventually we got the right. full game and it was like holy crap look at all of these other like characters and classes and look at all the stuff i can do do. it's like this is this is overwhelming yeah no fantastic game it's and it's it's one that i don't feel like has ever really been successfully like iterated and recreated like i think the closest i've ever managed to find is like rim world um or maybe like a sims almost but like nothing to that full extent that majesty has where it's just like you just kind of set stuff up and you don't control anybody you just kind of are like hey i'd like you to go over here how much money the most, will it take for you to go right. here <laughs> like the most maddening part it's like please go where i need you to go it's like what if i give you a ton of gold to go over here <laughs> yeah. yes exactly uh, that uh, game was that was when I first like got like a PC that could actually play games. And I mm-hmm. like first started dabbling in steam. Yeah, that was like one of the first things I searched for was like they have majesty in here and they had the gold edition. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's no brainer. I was also, yeah, I have it on in my steam library as well. Yeah. So I think what just happened was uh, we just became best friends. Is that- yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> oh, my God. Such a friendly, um, unlockable neighborhood gamers like, yes that, that might be a merge our shows right yeah <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yes. that wow I, I i don't have words to describe how happy that makes me i don't like i i never even i listen to so many podcasts and i haven't heard anybody talk about majesty how many ever, of our which, collective listeners do you think are gonna like skip past this part and how many of them are gonna be like <laughs> oh my god three other people that know what majesty is I, I hope it's all of them because I think everybody <laughs> yes. should play Majesty. It's yes. that fantastic. Do yourself um, a favor. It's it's only like five or ten dollars on or Steam. Something. I think like it, I think when sale. it's on sale, it's like two dollars. Like yeah. buy it on Steam. I guarantee your computer could run it because it's a game that came out in like <laughs> two thousand and one or two thousand and two or something. Like you can do it. There, there's no greater stress than just you know all, you're trying to get your town up and going and then just getting swarmed from all sides you're just like i can't do anything right yes. now oh god i love it okay yes. I, i'm sorry please continue oh, i yeah, had to go no. off on that tangent yeah so I, that's <laughs> i'm hey we're always having to talk majesty with somebody oh, uh, excited but uh so yeah i you know i was playing some games on the computer but like not not really a ton just because like you know pc gaming was not like a for me a big thing back then and so i got a uh, nintendo gamecube uh played a bunch of stuff on that um you know smash brothers melee paper mario uh, mario kart mario party um mm. that sort of knockoff final fantasy lord of the rings game um you know a bunch of just random cool stuff um and uh eventually ended up with an xbox um you know got super into halo halo 2 halo 3 you know the the Mm -hmm. advent of online gaming um battlefront 2 um and then have basically been an xbox fan for the rest of ever you know my time as a gamer uh, the next 40 years yeah yeah immediately (laughs) got like an xbox 360 like got a 360 when it came out got an xbox one like a probably a couple of years after it came out, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. But 
like yeah. wait till they smooth it over. <laughs> well, that and just like uh, in, I was in school at the time still. Uh, and uh, like I watched the trailer for like the Master Chief Collection, The Witcher 3 and the reveal for like the new Star Wars Battlefront. And I was like, mm. all right. Yeah, I do need to go ahead and bite this bullet and get this, <laughs> it's this upgrade because <laughs> those are not coming to the 360. Um, and so I, I went ahead and got that um, and got a Series X, like managed to find one the year it came out. Um, oh, nice. And so I've just been kind of doing that. Uh, I've dabbled in other things like I was never really a big handheld gamer. Um, I did get a, a 3DS eventually just to like try out some stuff. Um, and then got a switch um, to to enjoy my time with that. Um, and it's still one that I play, uh, but not like a ton, a ton. Got a PS4 um, to play Bloodborne. Yeah. yeah, I bought a PS4 of off course. of Andrew when he was upgrading so that I could uh, play Bloodborne. Um, but yeah, so my 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 journey has been a long one, um, but I've I've just enjoyed my my time with games it's been mostly xbox um mm. so it's it's hard to talk me out of any sort of xbox fandom right but what about you he Andrew? is he is the xbox fanboy for me uh let's see so i remember probably my first gaming memory is seeing like super mario world at a friend's house mm -hmm. uh and just like that music the art style that's still my favorite like mario art style um mm -hmm. For me personally, my parents bought us Game Boy Colors when we were going on a long road trip. And I remember I had like a Looney Tunes game, maybe yeah, a few other games. So like these are really fuzzy memories. Um, mm. And then similar to Dylan, played video games at friends' houses um, and then got a GameCube for Christmas one year with Pac-Man, Pac-Man World two or some such nonsense which was fun um i think it had maybe i got like mario sunshine or something with it like a mm. nintendo core game and then i got lord of the rings the return of the king yeah oh yeah and i remember just playing that like all christmas morning and like the <laughs> like the rest of my life like i'm still <sighs> playing it no that game was <laughs> was so good at that age and in mm. that era and it felt like you were you got to take part in the epic battles in the movies right. which like as an 11 year old boy that was all i really cared about in those movies one of the best licensed games ever so good oh so my good. gosh so good oh so then uh from gamecube i played video games at, at other people's houses again and and one of those people was dylan uh, a lot of my kind of outside of nintendo gaming happened with dylan because he had Halo, he had Modern Warfare, he had games like that. So in any time our families would like get together, that was that was something that Dylan and I did was just game. The he mentioned that like Final Fantasy Lord of the Rings knockoff game, and like we played that a ton as kids. Um, and then when I started, I started working really young. I started working basically at around fourteen, fifteen, uh, doing some like construction stuff, and was making money. And so I bought myself an Xbox three hundred and sixty. And I bought Assassin's Creed 2, Grand Theft Auto 4, and Halo 3, but it was in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, to this day, Assassin's Creed is like one of my, fa like one of my favorite gaming series. And, uh, and, you know, Grand Theft Auto, everybody loves Grand Theft Auto. And then Halo, I never really clicked with until like Infinite I liked. Um, but I think if that game had maybe been in English, I would have been a bigger fan of halo <laughs> I, was say, was, you, I was to say you didn't play the rest of them in spanish you're just like yeah, well, no, no I, I have to commit so <laughs> just like get get into it but no so like that was kind of the big moment for me where it's like a gaming just like expanded a ton and i was old enough to get like the more popular games i remember red dead redemption was like a real big game for me the way that game ends just like legitimately shocked me with like how it made me feel sad mm -hmm. oh yeah and i was like video games aren't supposed to be sad like you're just supposed to like kick ass and take names you know? why am i feeling things and like when that game ended I, like i was literally kind of just like pondering life you know like what just happened to me right and uh so that was kind of when it, it became like okay maybe gaming is just a little bit more than like power fantasies but like 
gaming has always been there for me as like that way to unwind that go to hobby. Like I'll choose it over movies or TV shows or whatever. And it, I think it's all also been like one of the core pillars of like Dylan and I's friendship with it's probably mm-hmm. that and music, like through our teen mm-hmm. years. I mean, we were playing rock band all the time. We were playing modern warfare yep. two. We were playing man, the halo games, like left for dead Two. like it, looking back at some of those like pinnacle multiplayer games that have come out throughout the years, Dylan and I played them together. Uh, and then if we weren't playing games together, we were playing games like, you know, shadow of Mordor or the Witcher three. And we were yeah. talking about them. And so, yeah, that, that was, that was kind of it, like growing up and going through it. And then when I, when I became an adult and was like actually making like real money, um, I had the, the Xbox one i i went xbox one over ps4 until spider-man came out and then i had to Mm -hmm. buy a ps4 um it was it was absolutely necessary and required Mm -hmm. and so i bought that that game was amazing and now i have all the consoles and a pc that can play some games and so like i can i'm fortunate enough where i can kind of pick and choose and then once i kind of discovered like that industry level like we've already kind of talked about like you know the podcasts and the the deeper discussions about what games are and what they can be and all of that. Like now it's, it's gone a little bit even deeper than just, you know, a hobby that I really enjoy, but like looking back and kind of prepping for the show. And I mean, it's something that I've always kind of known, but like really kind of like jotting sound down some notes to like keep track of my thoughts because I'm a dad and I'm getting old and like my brain just (laughs) turns to mush. But I was like, I mean, really when I look back, it's like, Gaming was definitely kind of that one of those core things that's like one of the things that's kept Dylan and I's friendship going throughout because we met when we were like, you know, nine, 10, 11, kind of in that range. And Mm -hmm. then we've gone separate ways, come back, kind of whatever. Like he's gone to school. I've stayed here. I've gone to school. I've gotten married. You know, we've all got, we've done like separate things in life, which in years past, when the internet and things like that weren't so prevalent and your connectivity wasn't so easy, like Mm -hmm. that's how friendships end, you know, you just kind of drift apart. But like Mm -hmm. gaming has been probably that one main thing. That's definitely been like that core pillar, that core thing that keeps bringing us back. And obviously it's not the only thing we ever talk about. Like Mm -hmm. I mentioned music, obviously, and obviously we have like actual conversations outside of just our hobbies, (laughs) but like it's so easy now to just like hit him up and be like, yo, you want to jump on some bloodborne or you want to mm-hmm. play some halo or whatever. And like, we're neither of us are like really great at competitive games. So most of the time we're just kind of talking about like, you know, what's going on, what's mm-hmm. happening. And so like it's g- gaming has been, I think really important in that sense. And like I'm using Dylan as an example because like he's here, we're talking about our show. Like obviously the two of us are very passionate about gaming, but I mean, I played games with my brother when he was away. I played games with other people. And it's like, it, it is kind of a cool connective tissue for relationships like that. You know, uh, I would agree, especially when you have friends that play majesty hundred yeah. percent, that'll yes. keep friendships going <laughs> strong. So, so the three um, of us need to like figure out a way to do like a three way PVP majesty. There's gotta stream. be a mod. Somebody, somebody has to have modded that. Yeah. But, I think yeah, the main but. thing is just making sure that you can still play uh multiplayer. So yeah. If exactly. it's still active. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, stay we'll, tuned. We'll stay tuned. This might be There's happening. Still, <laughs> some but, um, future content ideas kicking around. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm very much the same way too. Yeah. Gaming is a thing I have very close friends of mine uh from college that live very far away from me it's it's really the only th- way that we're able to like do things together is through yeah. video games so what well, is it um, your co-host on side questing like you met through gaming yeah i met him through gaming and yeah he lives on the east coast and i've never met him in real life and that's pretty much the only way we've ever hung out is is by playing video games so yeah. um which is again i never thought i would have like a quote-unquote like internet friend but mm-hmm. It's like yeah, the modern day pen pal. <laughs> it, it it really is. It really is. And it's like I said, we talk around up like, hey, don't talk to strangers. But hey, talking to strangers has led me to meet some of the most like nicest, awesome people in my life. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, 
I don't know. Not, not, not that I would ever tell my kids to talk to strangers, but no, <laughs> just, no. It, context, just be smart about it. Context, yes, context. is important. <laughs> yes. Just, just be smart about it. Um, so it's, it's not always easy. I always ask this question. Um, do you have uh, a game or like a handful of games that uh, you consider like your favorite all time or that mean, mean a lot to you? Dylan. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, uh, one of the biggest games, if you've listened to the podcast that Erica did with us, Slime uh, Rancher. Slime Rancher is Dylan's favorite game of all time. <laughs> Let's I've go. never <laughs> even played it. Um, <laughs> but uh, Monster Hunter, uh, Monster Hunter World specifically and Iceborne. Um, I and Monster Hunter Huge. in general, but I think every Monster Hunter fan is a little biased towards like their first Monster Hunter. Uh, mm-hmm. And. And so that that is definitely one of my overall like favorite games of all time. Uh, I would also throw The Witcher Three in that list um, because that is definitely one. I'm gonna oh, yeah. I'm gonna steal that from Andrew before he can say it. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I haven't quite decided where my FromSoft stuff shakes out so i'm just gonna throw in like just from soft games in general minus what a Sekiro. cop out what a um, <laughs> it, it's it's a it's a battle between elden ring and bloodborne um but i don't know i haven't figured out exactly where those ones kind of shake out mm, um yeah. but those and so those ones are like some of the more recent ones um but like l- reaching back you know, games like Knights of the Old Republic, which was like my first big RPG that was really like, oh, man, like you can get games that are way deeper than just like, you know, dudes on a screen moving around like RTSs or something like that. Majesty, obviously a big one, because it's one of my first like actual game games. Um, And then. um, The. Just kind of like. Battlefront 2, I guess, was one of one of the big ones, because that was like the first one I really got into, um, like the original one from 2005, not the remake one that came out like a few years ago. Um, but that was like the first like multiplayer online game that I ever really got into was was Battlefront 2, and like met a bunch of cool people through that. So that game was so cool mm-hmm. yeah they they did that game a disservice by remaking it they should have just left it alone yes <laughs> my opinion but uh anyways why you andrew yeah so at the top of the list for me is still the witcher 3 um the game i think is just a really a really amazing rpg in general the characters the writing top tier um honestly still unmatched in my opinion they couldn't they couldn't even top it with cyberpunk um I I love the world and how your decisions actually matter and shape things on like a a world level, but also on like very like character kind of simple level. Like it just they they did such a good job and like I'm listening to all the audiobooks now and like I'm wrapping up the series uh after taking a little bit of a break and it's like mm. just the the attention to detail and the care and like the way that they integrated certain events and characters and things into the games that came from the books. It's like, you can tell that they were very passionate about this series and outside of the Witcher three, just being a fantastic game. Like it released at a time where I was like in a kind of a funk personally. And so it very much was like my therapy at that time. Like Mm -hmm. I would just kind of get home from work and like, I just played the Witcher three until it was time to go to bed and like just soaked up that game and that world. And it was like, Mm -hmm everything that i wanted it to be my brother and a, another buddy of ours we were all playing it kind of at the same time and comparing like well i did this in this quest what did you do what happened and and we all beat it and then we all immediately rolled in new game plus and like played it again and it mm-hmm. just it was such a, a a good experience um and i still enjoy it now and i'm actually itching to to play it again currently so it's not like it's just kind of a moment in time like i i really enjoy that game think it still holds up Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, I didn't cop out and Bloodborne was the game that I chose. <laughs> um, I do have Elden Ring further down the line as like an honorable mention. Yeah. Mm. But Bloodborne was it was the game that got me into the Souls games. Um, and other than Elden Ring, it has no competition in the whole genre for me, like just the setting, combat, the. The lore, the story, just the the designs 
it's a masterpiece and yes i would take a remake or a sequel or something and definitely after playing elden ring and going back to it it's like yeah i can see how it's aged a bit but like i can still go back to it and it's still a great time the muscle memory is there and it still feels good to play uh and then for me like those are the two big ones. So I, I threw together like a list of kind of honorable mentions and most of them are recent because I think video games are just getting better in general. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously like I have nostalgic picks, uh, but like for me, some of the games that stand out, Spider-Man mentioned that earlier, Spider-Man PS4, just a, it's like the perfect blend of like nostalgia with how you thought Spider-Man two played on the, the GameCube PS2 mm -hmm. era, but also mm -hmm. just like, way better and had an amazing story that made me cry at the end <laughs> yeah uh red dead 2 fantastic game mm -hmm. god of war elden ring like i mentioned earlier i also mentioned um i'm a fan of the assassin's creed series i like the old ones i like the new ones i'm not one of those people that's like they need to go back to the way it was or they need to keep it the way it is like i i enjoy both i do think they've had some weaker titles recently but i still enjoy the series Mm -hmm. and then the one of the games that did come to mind when i was making this list that was older was wind waker like that mm. that game definitely jumps out at me as like just being when i think of like gamecube and childhood games and like formulative games and stuff like that wind waker always pops up everything from the art style to the music to just like that game felt so massive and like you could explore and do so much i go back now and it's like oh, i could beat this in like 25 hours but mm -hmm. <laughs> Back then, like it was so incredible, and I I really enjoy it, and I hope that it comes to Switch at some point. So that's those are kind of some of the ones I threw together. Obviously, I, if I had more time, like I really love some of the old Mega Man games on the DS. Like there, I mean, there's tons of games that I played that I would say are, were important to me at different stages in my life. But when I was right. throwing this list together, these are some of the ones that jumped out at me. Right, absolutely. Uh, I want to ask uh, one side tangent question, um, considering it seems like we've all had extensive experience with The Witcher 3 here. Yeah. Uh, I, it is a well-known fact that I have a personal vendetta against card games and video games, so I wanted to ask <laughs> how you guys felt about Gwent. Gwent is amazing. Um, <laughs> I, think that, I think that Gwent in the core game of The Witcher 3 is a lot of fun, uh, and once you realize that spies in the i think it's a northern realms deck is mm -hmm. just like that's the op build and you just mm -hmm. like you just throw out spies and can destroy gwent as a standalone and throne breaker i have tried to get into um and they just haven't really stuck with me as much because i actually like i don't love mm -hmm. deck builders as a genre like right you know slay the spire people that yeah. going back to earlier conversations people talk about how that game is just like god tier and they put 400 hours into it I played it. I thought it was cool. Mm -hmm. I haven't gone back to it. Mm -hmm. And so when I try to just play standalone Gwent or standalone uh, like Thronebreaker, which is just, you know, essentially Gwent with a slight RPG skin on it. I enjoy it and I want to like it more than I do. But also they drastically changed how the game worked because in The Witcher 3, I don't think they realized how big it was going to get. And so it really isn't necessarily that well balanced, that perfect of a card game. And so in Gwent standalone and in Thronebreaker, they try to make it a little bit more, they mm -hmm. trim the fat, they try to make it more balanced. They try to make it more competitive. They try to make different builds and different decks more viable. And like, I just haven't had the motivation to actually dig into all that stuff, but core game I like it conceptually. I like it. Just card builders also are not necessarily deck builders are not necessarily like my thing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I I just remember my playthrough with it and like everybody that wanted to like I I didn't even do like the Gwent quest line. I was just like I don't want to play a card game in my video game. I just want to I just want to kill things, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, no, I just had to ask that question. Yeah. So, the card game uh, is interesting. Like that quest line because it's once you start that quest where you go like to go to the tournament is what you're talking mm -hmm. about. I'm assuming. When you get to the tournament, you can't like save. Mm -hmm. oh. So you, you have to beat all of the opponents in the tournament to the end without failing to get like that achievement or whatever, because I've done it a couple of times, but it's right. very stressful if you like do it too early or whatever, because 
if you get about halfway through or to the second to the last opponent and you fail out, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, I either let this quest go and let it wrap up how it, because they have endings written for it depending on where you lose. So oh, you can okay. just, you can just let the game keep going, but you don't get the achievement for winning. Mm-hmm. Oh. And so you have the choice of like, that. do I just let the game keep going or do I go back to that save at the beginning of the tournament and start over? <laughs> and it's Ooh. like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yep. Man, that that's probably why I didn't do it then. I'm, I couldn't handle that stress. And yeah, I already have anything that's a deck builder. I've tried those. I've tried the Hearthstones and I just, I don't think I have like the brain acumen to like build mm-hmm. good synergized decks. I'm just like, oh, that thing looks cool. Let me put it in there and it doesn't synergize with anything that I have. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so we're coming to the end here and I'm going to wrap it up, but uh, I don't have a game on my show, uh, but I wanted to, to devise like a fun thing for us to do. Yeah. So uh, I devised uh, I'm calling it the lightning round copyrighted mm-hmm. trademarked. Let's sure. do it. Uh, so I just have a quick list here and, and I'll go along with you guys. I'll tell you mine as well. Yeah. Uh, I'll just like quick eight questions. I just put that figure be fun to go through. So yeah. um, if you guys are ready, uh, are you guys ready to go yeah yes, sir okay perfect so uh first question i had was a uh, game you think is underrated i know for me uh the one that comes to mind and and to be fair like uh, i don't feel like this is necessarily like uh you've never heard of this game like it's mass effect 3 i feel right. like mass effect 3 gets oh. so much hate and like was interesting drastically underrated below like mass effect 1 and 2 um and I think it is a fantastic game. The the fact that you still have the free will and agency to choose right up until the end um, was maybe game breaking or like just disappointing for a lot of people. Like if you're actually role playing the game, like. Then you're going to make the choice that goes along with what you've been playing and doing the entire time. And it's just I love that game because it wraps up all of these things that have been being set up for like two and a half games Mm -hmm. and it just like every single one has this big like emotional and satisfying ending to it um so that's that's going to be mine personally just because i feel like it gets a lot of hate in gaming circles uh it's one of the fun ones to like pile on and and you know be like uh mass effect 3 was so bad or whatever the ending blah 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 it's like I loved it. I thought it was great. I played it. I played it through like without the the patch that tweaked the ending, and I played it through mm. after they tweaked the ending. I love both, so I was fine with it before they tweaked the ending personally. So that's a good one. I like I said the the popular picks always Mass Effect too, so I like mm. that one a lot. That's really good. What about you, Andrew? So the is this a uh, lightning round where we give our answer and then we get to expound on it for a long time or are we just supposed to like lightning? Yeah, it's not respond? one of your lightning rounds. I don't think maybe it is. You I can uh, you can give a I was intending it to be a little quicker, but you can give a little explanation if you want. That's fine. No big deal. Because <laughs> I, I, I my struggle is that I have like three that popped in my head and I could definitely think of more. I probably should have gone first because when Dylan was talking, I had time to think of more. Mm-hmm. OK, Um. Man, okay, let me do honorable mentions. I'll do Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy and Darksiders 3. Darksiders nice. as a series. And then my the one I'll actually maybe talk about for a minute is Days Gone. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, no, that's a good one. your Days Gone. <laughs> that's a good one. I think that uh, as far as like games in the genre go, like open world games and zombie games, like I think that Days Gone did an excellent job at both. I think that it was a little bit uh, maybe like bloated and kind of maybe had some pacing issues for sure. And it had some definite technical hiccups when it released on the PlayStation 4. But then by the time I played it, because I didn't play it at launch, (laughs) they had patched a lot of that. And uh, now definitely on PS5, like it runs pretty well. But like because I think because it was being held up to the standards of your last of us twos of your Spider-Man of your God of war, all the other PlayStation uh, exclusive games, it got overly criticized. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that that game does a lot of really fun things. I don't think that it like breaks the open world genre, like that mold too much, Mm -hmm. but I do think the few things that it does 
differently, like the the survival stuff with like the motorcycle and with the horde battles and things like that are really fun. And I I actually some of this is pacing, but like towards the back half of the game, the story goes some pretty crazy places and some wild places and introduces some cool characters that I wasn't expecting and really enjoyed. I think, yeah, I mean, I guess I've heard I've heard mixed things on Days Gone. I've been meaning to go and check it out. Days Gone is one of those I, games I that like fascinating the community versus the critical reception are like so opposed. Right. Because it has right. such a diehard following. But like if you just looked at reviews for it, it would be like, yes, this is a six out of ten. That, that's so weird. And it's a shame that Ben Studios kind of got wrapped into working with Naughty Dogs and they didn't get a chance to do a sequel because I think they they probably they probably would have been in much better. A much better sequel yeah they could have totally jedi fallen ordered it and been like oh yeah, yeah this is a great proof of concept now let's like tweak it and make it the best it can be and release a sequel and I, I guarantee days gone 2 would have been a much better probably even critically better game 100 percent uh i would do mine quick uh final fantasy 9 it is the best of the ps1 era final fantasies it is better <laughs> also better than final fantasy 10 I'll fight anybody that says otherwise. So um, I will not fight you on that because <laughs> I've never yeah. played either. So okay, well, uh, seven and ten are, are the golden children, but uh, nine's better. That's all I have to say. Uh, moving on. Um, okay, so <laughs> opposite end of the spectrum, yeah. I, I I had a game you guys think is overrated. Yeah, mm. this spicy one spicy. Take care. Yeah, this one was tough because I was like, most of the games that I would like be like, oh, that's overrated, are games that I just don't like don't vibe with me personally exactly um and so the one that i just like i feel like i get but i just don't get the hype around it is fallout 3 um like that's that's one where i'm just like i get it i understand it i've played through like 60 percent of it and it was just like i you know like some of it is definitely like i prefer the fantasy over the like nuclear apocalypse but um the way that people talk about fallout 3 uh makes it sound like it's this amazing game and i'm just like it's an okay game but like it's nothing crazy it's nothing special to me i don't know so it was uh fallout 3 was actually my gateway into bethesda believe it or not because i i bought oblivion uh, and i hated it uh-huh. i thought it was i was just like i, I hate this yeah. and then it wasn't until fall three that it kind of clicked so mm-hmm. that's interesting though so um what about you andrew uh final fantasy nine god damn <laughs> <laughs> i'm ending the meeting goodbye <laughs> <This is done. laughs> uh yeah no this one was this one was also kind of tough for me because mm-hmm. Like usually if a game is well regarded, it's for a reason. I there's a couple, I guess, that come to mind. Um, one that I can't speak to as much because I didn't give it a, that much of a fair shake, but like Resident Evil 4. People mm-hmm. talk about how that game is like so amazing and still holds up. Like I couldn't mm-hmm. get past the janky controls. Uh and then the Uncharted series comes to mind. Ooh. I've played one, two, and part of three, probably about half of three, and I'm just like, this is okay. This is fine. Like, I don't hate it, but I don't understand what all the praise is about. Mm -hmm. And I hear that four is the best, but I also, I feel like I could probably expand that to all of Naughty Dog. Like, the the more I play their games is like, I think they're really good at characters. And relationships and interactions, but I don't ever really feel like I'm having a ton of fun playing their games. Like I don't usually enjoy the gameplay of any of their games. I think Last of Us Two expanded on and improved the formula that Last of Us One had, but it's still like I don't ever really feel the itch to go back to that gameplay. Like I see these crazy John Wick like compilations on YouTube of like ellie just going through and just wrecking stuff and throwing bricks and shooting and like it's like damn that looks cool i don't even want to try like i don't even want to play it even this doesn't make me want to replay that game and yeah. like i think the stories and the characters and stuff are fun in those games but i just don't really think that their their gameplay is all that fun 
I uh I wish we could have the uh Crash Bandicoot Jack and Daxter Naughty Dog back. That's what I miss. I did happen, I do so. like I do love Crash Bandicoot. I yeah. haven't played a lot of those games recently, but I remember playing Crash like on my Game Boy and stuff like that back in the day. One has one has not aged that well, <laughs> believe yeah, it or not. So no, yeah, yeah. not too surprising. Um, <laughs> uh for mine, game I think is overrated. Uh GTA five. Mm hands down 100 percent. so i love red dead redemption one and two i think they're fantastic uh mm-hmm. i think that every other rockstar game that has come out has been kind of overrated mm-hmm. i think for me i understand okay, that rockstar we does, can't like, do this at the n- end of the listen podcast, no so. no no so <laughs> narratively narratively rockstar puts out great games uh yeah. It's it's 2022. Can we not like we figured out controls, Rockstar? Like yeah. we know how to do this. Like <laughs> yeah. why have you guys not figured it out? Okay, uh, yeah, fair and, enough. Yeah, that that that's pretty much my main sticking point with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, most GTA Five, Red Dead Redemption gets passed because those games are fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's because they yeah. started developing that game that came out in 2022 back in like 2009. So. 2000, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been one game for 13 years. Yeah, yeah oh for sure. man. Hopefully they figured it out when they launched GTA six in 2030. Uh, yeah. Here's hoping we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so next question I have is a uh, game you'd like to see get a modern remake uh, a la Final Fantasy seven remake. This one was easy. Prince of Persia. Yes. Prince of Persia. The Sands of Time trilogy. Oh, yes. I really struggling it. right now, isn't it? That yeah. would be dope. I, and, and like I was like, I know that it's getting a remake. I don't have a lot of faith in it because it's gotten delayed so many <laughs> times. The The footage has not looked great. I don't need it to look great. I just want to play it on like a modern control scheme with like. Right. Somewhat updated graphics, you know, like so. But that's easy. That's, you know, I love those games and I would love to be able to play them again and have it look a little bit nicer. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. for me, I've got two two picks the first one that i'll I'll just go quick because it's obvious is uh legend of zelda ocarina of time oh that would be fantastic because i've I've wanted to go back to that game but it's like pretty much all the versions are still dated at this point and so like if they did like a full-on ff7 remake style game of that that would be amazing even if they just made it in like the style of breath of the wild it would still be do you do you do that though is that that that's sacrilege you don't touch that that seems like it'd be man well but people no. would have said that about final fantasy 7 that's true you know yeah, that's that's no. you're right that's true you could it, it could totally work but the one that i think is more under the radar that people need to go google is sphinx and the cursed mummy <laughs> uh which is another game that got brought up on our old show a lot by me and my sister um mm-hmm. and that is a, a zelda-esque style game where you play as two different characters sphinx who's like your action hero and then the mummy who is dead so he can like take on elemental damage and like if he gets sliced in half he like becomes two versions of himself and so Mm -hmm. like that half of the game is like puzzle solving if you're on fire you have to do like puzzles that like you know use fire sphinx is like fighting the monsters and stuff and this is a game that we played on gamecube that like to us felt huge and crazy and like anytime we got to the next part of it felt like an achievement because we were stuck in that one area for so long. Mm-hmm. I've replayed it recently. They did a remaster on Switch a couple years ago. And I still think it holds up and it's a lot of fun, but it definitely feels a lot more linear and a lot smaller than I remembered. And so I think that if this game either got like just a crazy blown out remake or some sort of like a reboot or sequel mm-hmm. or something like that that was modern, I think it could be really cool. It's a really fun kind of like Egyptian lore based property that I think could could be really fun. I I googled it while you were talking and I, I was like I have no idea what this game is but I have memories of I've seen the game case yeah. so I, I, ha- I have come across this game before it's on so, switch you should check it out uh, okay I'll move it to the top of the list <laughs> I think I have to we'll do an episode uh, about it for sure <laughs> um, for me I would like to see the they already kind of did it with when they did Fire Emblem Shadows of Valentia they remade an old one with more modern take I'd like to see them do that with more of the older ones, mm-hmm. especially the ones that never came over from Japan. Um, yeah, the very, very, very first Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon was the one with Marth. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think people know Marth from Smash Bros. So I yes. think it'd be cool to kind of do yeah. Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon uh, or even the original ones that came over originally on the GBA to North America would also be very cool. So yeah. 
Uh, that is my short answer. Uh, favorite console? Um, mine's a little bit by like, I think the console that impacted me the most is probably the Xbox 360. Um, just because that was like at the peak time where it was like playing online. It was the like go to console of uh, like us hanging out as f- our friend group. Like, you know, that was what we were playing rock band on. That was what we were playing, mm-hmm. you know, Halo, Left 4 Dead, all of those kind of things on when we would get together. And that's what we would play online on, you know, outside of that. But I'm also a little biased, like. Uh, the Xbox Series X is new and cool and, and awesome. And so, you know, like, I love that, too. <laughs> so uh, mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of nostalgia like <laughs> glasses for, for my stuff. It's like this one's the newest and the best. I like this one. So that's fair. Yeah, I think for me. Um, if I look back nostalgically, it's the GameCube, because mm-hmm. that was kind of that gateway, that entry into the world of console gaming and like bigger games coming off of like handhelds and stuff. I think if I had to pick a game or a console currently, like out of the current family, like it's, it's tough because I love the switch for its functionality and like indies and Nintendo first party games. But I think that it needs a little bit of an update to keep up right now. And I think when I if I'm going to play a game and it's available to me on all the consoles currently, I go for my Xbox. Mm -hmm. I think that that controller is the most comfortable. I don't think the PS5 like. Rumble trigger stuff is like enough for me to pick a game there. Um, I am playing Tales on Tales of Arise there because I got it cheaper there. So like those two are pretty comparable to me at this point, the PS five and the Xbox series X. Um, if I had to pick like ugliest console, it would be PS five. Good. Good answer. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, no, I'm in, I'm in the same boat. Uh, I I was firmly an Xbox person until, uh, I mean, I don't have a series X yet, but I'd still prefer a game on Xbox. I think my answer would be the same. The 360 was, incredibly formative that's when i finally realized like what games could actually be and played a ton with my my friends on the 360 so that was a great console uh game you spent the most number of hours on and i might know this for dylan maybe yeah. so <laughs> we we actually in our recent recording we actually looked this up for ourselves um mm-hmm. the the one that i know for a fact that i've spent the most hours on is monster hunter because i've spent over 400 hours playing monster hunter world uh, hell yeah the one that I suspect might potentially have overtaken it is World of Warcraft, just because ah. I play, I've played that off and on for what ten years at the like two thousand four, two thousand five. Like I played during the second expansion, so it's been forever since I've been playing that game. Okay, um, and I'm not currently subscribed, so I couldn't like log in and get like my time played. <laughs> Um, right but uh, <laughs> but it is one that i feel like probably overtakes it just because that game has been ongoing for years and years and years um and then um you know there's also a possibility of like you know one of the old school halos being in there and oh before, yeah. like tracking was a thing so <laughs> right <laughs> um, but yeah the one i know for sure is monster hunter by a long shot too. Like the closest one is still like 150 hours off of, oh, of it. Man. So <laughs> yeah. I'll and drink I'm, to that, sir. I'm not sure exactly when this releases, but probably our episode that we talked about this on at the end will be out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like Dylan said, we looked it up. I looked mine up live on the episode and uh, Netflix was my most played. <laughs> <laughs> Um, imagine that <laughs> but i'm pretty sure i have more hours correct me if i'm wrong dylan i have more hours in the the game that i'm about to mention than you do in monster hunter and that yes. was the witcher 3 yeah you had like 500 wow. something hours in wow. Witcher 3, I think. <laughs> and that was only on xbox and i know i've played it through on playstation mm-hmm. and i'm probably gonna buy it on switch and download wow. on pc and so yeah the witcher 3 for me for sure 
that's wild uh no pun intended wild hunt uh, <laughs> bad joke uh yeah for me it, it's by yeah it's monster hunter world by far uh e- easily 400 hours if i had to guess um surprisingly i looked mine up too surprisingly destiny one was not far behind with 375 mm-hmm. hours wow, yeah. so yeah, yeah i think destiny surprising two was in there. second place and but it yeah. was it was still a little short of monster hunter yeah so big news there uh yeah what was my next question here so uh oh standard or inverted controls and standard 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 all the way standard easy okay yeah, cool you're a monster I, I, if you prefer inverted i'll just yeah. put that I out don't, there right i now. don't know if i do inverted flying because i don't fly in games all that often i might do right. it in flying games but that's like more acceptable in my mind so i'm i'm uh sorry brian of list off please don't listen to this <laughs> no please do you're wrong get off that hill don't die on that hill because you're wrong <laughs> this is a hill to die on that's yeah. for sure uh have you ever taken time off of work to play a game when it comes out uh i have not personally um the i would say the closest i've ever gotten is like i used to work like an overnight shift uh where I would uh, I was kind of just like one of the dorms like monitors, like making sure if you got locked out of your room at 3 a.m. that I could Mm. call somebody and help you get back in sort of deal. Um, Right. And so I didn't take time off work, but I played a lot of Diablo three right when it came out. uh, Oh, yeah. Nights there. But other than that, I haven't. I think the closest I got was maybe um, Elden Ring, but I never ended up pulling that trigger uh, just because my work schedule provided me with enough flexibility that i was like uh that's fine like i don't i can play i can go to work for like five hours and come back and play this so nice it's funny you mentioned elden ring because i can't really think of a time in the past but when elden ring came out i just so happened to be at home sick so like i didn't actually take time like i didn't call in Mm -hmm. Just he for sounded the game. awful too. Like yeah. I can confirm that he was legitimately like congested as all hell. Like yeah, if you oh, go, God. like I'm pretty sure, like you could probably find the the stream <laughs> highlights on our YouTube <laughs> of like when we were playing Elden Ring when it first came out. Like I was actually homesick, but I was still like, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna make the most of it. And yeah, yes, like Dylan said earlier, we set our time to New Zealand. We played it like the day before, and I I was home already, so I was like, hell yeah! And the wife went to work, the kid went to daycare, and it was like, this is fantastic. So this was meant out. to be. Exactly, yeah. it was fate. You had to you had to suffer, but it was worth it. I didn't have like any <laughs> tests or any like big assignments to. It was like all the clouds parted, and other than the <laughs> fact that I like couldn't breathe, I was like, this is this amazing. never happens. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I I shamefully have. I used to take off anytime they came out with the Destiny expansion mm-hmm. and play it same day, like wow. all day, and go through it. Yeah, it was. And then yeah, you got I was, fired. Weird. Yeah, I couldn't get that lucky. And no, that job <laughs> you could have, uh, you could have literally shot somebody and they would not have fired you. But, interesting. Uh, interesting. What job was yeah, that? <laughs> n- not that I ever wanted to, but uh, you know, maybe right in a couple of days. But yeah, I was I was deep in the in the Destiny uh cycle and then yeah. so yeah anytime there was a, a new expansion coming out i took off work to work to play i was one of the first people to attain the for house of wolves the new light cap level of 34 one of the first people to do it so oh, i was nice. very very proud of myself yeah. looking back it wasn't worth it because now you can't play that game anymore so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, does it doesn't question. matter nothing it, nothing it mattered at it. the time it mattered at the time one of the coolest things i've ever done uh now it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, uh, and then final question here: uh, anything in the future that you're looking uh, that's coming up, that's coming out in the near future? Mm. See, like this is the hard one for me because, like, for the longest time, my answer was Elden Ring. Elden Ring. Uh, and, yeah. and so <laughs> it's like, now, now what do we do? <laughs> like, what do I? What am I? Like, I guess the easy one for me is Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. I'm pumped Let's for the go. expansion to come out. Like. Iceborne was fantastic. I'm ready right. to get back into some Monster Hunter and play it. Um, so that's that, that'll probably be the one. Forspoken also looks really cool. I'm interested in in seeing how that. I'm very interested out. in Forspoken too. Um, but like Monster Hunter is like the big one. But yeah, it's been tough. It's been tough after Elden Ring because that was like yeah, Elden Ring obviously. <laughs> so right. Yeah, as far as games that are like 
you know, on the horizon. Um, I'm hopeful for Gotham Knights. The I like they released some gameplay today, and it's like, oh, I hope they uh, polish this a little bit more. Right. Um, but as far as games that we know are supposed to come out, I'm extremely excited for Spider-Man Two and Wolverine, both by oh, Insomniac. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've talked about Knights of the Old Republic. There's supposed to be like a remake of that, yeah, which I think would be, be cool. really cool. Like there's a lot of stuff that's been announced, but it's so nebulous. Like I'm excited about Fable. Um, but it's like these are all just things that like potentially are going to come out at some point. We don't yeah. really have like concrete in the details. future. Yeah, like this year, <laughs> I think Elden Ring was the big one. I'm trying to think of like holiday games and maybe after not E3, like Summer Game Fest or whatever, when we get like all our announcements and stuff, mm-hmm. I'll have some more stuff I'm excited about that's supposed to come out this year. Yeah. But for me, it's a lot of stuff that's a little bit more Mm -hmm. nebulous, a little bit further out. Yeah. RE4 remake will probably come out this year or early. Yeah, but I'm not going to play that. So maybe it'll be better, (laughs) but like the controls will be fixed, you know? Yeah, but it's still going to scare me. Well, yeah, you are a baby. (laughs) Yeah, it's still scary. This was a more difficult question too, because we just, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, it looked like there was some stuff coming yeah. up into this year, but with with Starfield and Redfall pushing yeah. now, yep. it's, it's like it's just God of War too. I was gonna say God no of War. Is confident in that, yeah, <laughs> God of War. I'm definitely like I'll definitely probably pick that up either day one or close to it and play it because I think it's gonna be really good. I really like the first one, but I'm mm. not like it's not like Elden Ring where I was counting down the days and like yeah. soaking up the like pre release right. information because like I want to play this game so bad. I'm like, yeah, whenever it comes out, I'm definitely gonna play it because it's gonna be good. Mm. But I'm not like that level of hype about it. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm still not convinced that we'll get that this year. No. I, 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 yeah, I'm after Starfield moving, I'm like, okay, anything. The only thing that if you ask me, I had to pick one thing that I guarantee will not miss the release date. It's Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Yep. Yeah. Pokemon. Pokemon is not miss release dates. The Pokemon company, Nintendo need their money. That's not going to miss. That will be in whatever state it is when it launches. hundred yep. <laughs> percent. And it'll like, still get nine out of 10. And it'll sell you know? millions. It, yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll still. Yes. Yeah, so it's despite being the, the, almost the same exact game. Yep. Uh, Speaking yeah, I don't overrated games. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, sneaking it in at the end, just piss off that whole fan. <laughs> be a, but come listen to our show, show please. <laughs> <laughs> there's gonna be a, a man that shows up in a Pikachu costume at your house to deal with yeah. you later, probably. Um, uh, Mr. Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, actually, can I go back and change my remake one? Uh, Majesty remake would, be, would be sweet. Oh, man. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> can we talk? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I had to bring that back in, but um, yep. Uh, yeah, uh, well, that's the lightning round and not the not so lightning lightning round. Thank you guys. Appreciate it very much. It was a big but, thunderstorm. Uh, <laughs> like we live in the south. And so like when a storm rolls in, like it parks there for a minute. So yeah. that's what we're right. used to. It just stays. So. Guys, thank you so much for coming on the show. We're going to wrap it up here. Uh, th- this was awesome. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, do you guys just want to take a second to drop all your socials, tell the people where they can find you, what you're doing, uh, shill whatever you like. This is the shill section of the show, so feel free to. Okay, well, um, you can find all of our stuff at www.numberonemajestyfancast. At- <laughs> No, uh, but for real, you can find everything like on our website, which is fngamers.com. Like that is probably the easiest way to find us. I'm going to give Eric all of our links to everything. We have a Discord. We have we're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. 
Um, we have a YouTube channel where we we do kind of like uh, smaller reviews. We do Twitch highlights. We do stuff like that. Um, we have we stream on Twitch every Friday night at the bare minimum. We're looking at exploring that, and doing a little bit more. Podcast comes out every Monday. We do interviews with awesome people like Eric, um, and then do like you know deeper dives into games that we love, whether they're new or not. I mean, one of our more recent episodes was about Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of War, the Lord of the Rings games, and those have been out for a long time. So yeah, I mean, if you just look up your friendly neighborhood gamers, you look for our logo. We that was one of the things we did better about you know this project yeah. versus the last one is like we branded everything a lot more clearly. <laughs> but but like I said, I'm gonna give Eric everything. So just like check the show notes; it'll all be there. Um, yeah. But yeah, we your friendly neighborhood gamers were probably gonna be one of the the top <laughs> results. Dylan, yes. anything else that I forgot? No, I think you covered it. So yeah, just you know, if you've got space in your life for another podcast, we'd appreciate you checking us out and seeing if you like us. So. I would say evaluate the podcast you're listening to and then just remove the one that you're kind of on the fence about and put this one in its place for sure, because <laughs> your life will your life will certainly be better for it. Get rid of one of the big guys. You don't need all those IGN podcasts like it's they're all saying the same thing. So they just, don't even know how to edit. Yeah, sorry, you IGN, sorry, GameSpot, sorry. and kind of funny, like just pick one of those and drop it. Calling you out, IGN, call us, come come at us, let's go. Um, but no, guys, again, thank you so much for for coming on. I really appreciate it. This was awesome. And, Thanks for uh, having us, dude. It was a ton yeah. of fun. Really enjoyed. Let's it. let's do it again. Uh, I, I look forward to Monster Hunter and Majesty no, collaboration. Going to say the, the Majesty future. spinoff podcast that's about to start. <laughs> <laughs> How many episodes can we do on it? Like right. today, we're breaking down the wizard the wizard class. So I was gonna say you do yeah, classes breaking. and like buildings and stuff. It could probably go for a year at least. <laughs> probably could. You could talk at let's, least let's, a few times about Majesty Two, the very disappointing sequel. So, so uh, disappointing that I forgot it existed until you brought it up. <laughs> so, yeah, we don't so. talk about that. Right, right. So, uh, all right, guys, and to everybody listening, thank you so much for spending just a little bit of time with us. And if you take anything away from this episode of the podcast, go buy Majesty Unseen for ten dollars yes. and play it. Yes. Thanks again, everybody. Take it easy.